All right, so today I want to show you all my calico ball pythons. As a matter of fact, I just started with one calico, and I bred a whole bunch of other ones. I got a whole bunch of calicos from that one female. And one other thing I want to share, let's take a look at this. Bobby is actually in a shed. I've never actually had Bobby on camera in the middle of a shed. You know, he always has to be here on YouTube here. He is the star of the show, and I've never actually had him around my neck in the middle of the shed. He looks like he's shedding pretty good. I've been really keeping him high hydrated really good so I think he's gonna shed okay I just thought it was funny on the camera in the middle of the shed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out that original calico female I'm gonna show you that one which isn't really I don't think it's really that impressive of a calico and then when I started breeding it into some other stuff I got some really impressive results and let me tell you I'm really warming up to the calico gene makes some really amazing combinations all right, so take a look at this beast of a female. This is where all my calico stuff came from. Pretty awesome. And kind of the weird thing about this girl is she got egg bound this year. She was stuck with four eggs in her belly for a few weeks. I was kind of getting really nervous about it. And you know, a lot of people have different procedures as far as, you know, egg bound females. And what I found that finally worked is to feed her. <laughs> she was egg bound for a couple weeks and I finally fed her. It seemed like after that first feeding, it pushed those egg bound eggs through her belly, which is kind of crazy. She actually laid a 10 egg clutch, four, uh, six of them hatched and four of them were egg bound. And the egg bound, usually if they're even egg bound for like a day, usually those eggs get moldy and they don't hatch and this girl is you know I was kind of debating if I should give her a year off you know since she was egg bound this year but she has been really slamming the rats doing really well as far as feeding really good so I don't know if I'm going to breed her this year you know with the whole egg bound thing I'm thinking I'm kind of leaning towards giving her the year off just because she had so many problems and it really didn't affect you know her ability to eat that's for sure she's been eating like crazy and kind of the weird thing with the calico on this one is it's it really it's isn't really like the wide open clean calico like I've seen on a lot of, a lot of other accommodations. And the, the reason why I bought this girl to get, I, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't really say, you know, I want calico in my collection and that's not really the reason I bought her. The reason I bought her is because she was a really big female over on Morph Market. And at the time I was looking for a big female that was ready to breed. Now I think I paid, I think I paid like $800 for this girl. You know, a hatchling is definitely not worth that much, but a full size mature female ready to breed you know I paid the money for this girl because you know I was really looking to boost my production this is kind of back when I started in you know at the beginning of my breeding operations this she was one of the first ones that I bought as an adult female she's looking really good so the first year that I bred that girl, I produced some really amazing calico combos. Take a look at this guy. This is pretty much the only calico that I held back. I actually had another one that had pastel in the mix that instead of this real high white, it actually had uh, more of a like a bright yellow in here, which is kind of interesting. So this one is a bamboo calico, just two genes. Pretty amazing what the calico does to the bamboo. So this one is this one's actually Bobby's Bobby's son. This is the son of Bobby bred to that calico. Really awesome. Come to find out that the original pastel calico female, I just proved it out this year that she is 100% head desert ghost. I produced a really amazing super pastel desert ghost out of that girl. Just randomly bred uh, my visual desert ghost male to that girl and got a really crazy desert ghost popping out. So the, the cool thing about this is this one is 50% head desert Desert Ghost, there's a 50% chance that this one contains one copy of the Desert Ghost. And the problem is, is I didn't even know it until this year, so I didn't really prove this guy out to be Desert Ghost or not. So you know, I produced a bunch of stuff breeding this one to get more calicos this year. And I'm not 100% sure if this is Desert Ghost or not. So all the other ones, all the offspring from this one are possible head Desert Ghost. Pretty crazy, like this gray coming in on the side and the pattern is kind of like white with those little gray speckling in there. Pretty amazing combination. 
So here's one of my most recent hatchlings with the calico, and this is just calico all by itself, separated from all the other genes. So since I took that bamboo calico, I bred it to something else, and then produced the just the calico. And look at how kind of wide open the, the pattern is on the calico. As a matter of fact, this one's brand new, hasn't shed, hasn't eaten or anything, brand new, fresh, out of the egg. This guy, this guy's name is Octane. Really awesome, just a straight calico, pretty awesome. Awesome, just by itself. All right, so I want to show you these two snakes side by side. This one is a pastel. Look at how big this pastel skin. This is one of my first hatchlings from this year. I think it's had eight meals already, getting really super big. And then this was the second clutch. So this one's a little bit further behind. This is the, the pastel with the calico. Look at the difference that calico makes to the pastel. I absolutely love the addition of calico. What it does, it really opens up the, the sides, makes kind of a, like a white opening and it really keeps the pastel color right on top of the snake. Pretty amazing the difference between the pastel and the pastel calico. That is pretty amazing. Alright, so I want to show you these two snakes side by side. Take a look at these little ball pythons and little tiny paws. It's funny how they, they turn into these little balls. That's why they call them ball pythons. Kind of an interesting, I don't know why they do that. Kind of hilarious. So this one, you know, this one right here, this is a super pastel with two copies of the pastel. This is a really beautiful one. This is, matter of fact, they're both 100% head desert ghost on both of these. These are definitely going to be some holdbacks for my collection, really getting into the Desert Ghost stuff. So in this one, the Super Pastel, if I bred it to something else, all the offspring would come out as pastels. And then this one over here, this is a Super Pastel Calico. So if I breed this to something else, everything will come out as half will be pastel, half will be the Pastel Calicos, which is a really powerful breeder, breeding this into something else. And it's kind of interesting on this one, it almost looks kind of like the Sandblast gene in the side. I've never really seen so much like a sandblast pattern on it. Sometimes it's you know, kind of interesting to see if you'd actually have some other genes kind of floating in the mix. Sandblast is pretty powerful if you mix it in with some of the other combos. As a matter of fact, I might breathe this to something else. Maybe try to prove out that sandblast to see if it's actually in the mix. But, you know, as a matter of fact, I've actually seen a lot of these calico super pastels that kind of have that faded out color in the, the their body. Sometimes they'll have like little splotches of white, kind of like a like a bright color through the snake. It's kind of an interesting effect working calico into the super pastel. Definitely fades it out quite a bit more than the super pastel. Look at how beautiful that guy is. Really awesome. These are these are both females. I'm pretty sure, 99% sure. I probed them already. They're, they've had like I think they both have had eight meals. Looking really fantastic. It's quite a bit, uh, quite a big difference just by adding calico to that super pastel. So here is another one with calico in it. And as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to hold both of these back. And this one, the one we were just looking at, uh, some people say that they think there's enchi in there because of the kind of the, the kind of the pattern on the back of the head, how it's kind of pinched like that. And this one, uh, this one definitely has enchi, and you can definitely see like a reduction in pattern, kind of like these tiger stripes. So I'm thinking they may both have enchi in them. This one is just a lot more obvious that it has enchi with the, the Enchi essentially what it does is it really reduces the pattern into tiger stripes. A lot of times the Enchi will bring out more of an orange color in a lot of your combinations too. These guys are looking great. <laughs> Fantastic. It's amazing how fast they grow. It's weird that you just kind of, you know, pop the rodents in there and then, you know, a couple weeks later you pull them out and they're so much bigger. It's amazing how fast they grow. You don't even see it. Pretty awesome. All right, so take a look at this big old pinstripe. This is one of my females. As a matter of fact, she just laid eggs this year. She's back on food, doing really well, getting some weight back on her. And I actually produced for the first time ever this year, take a look at this, I produced a pinstripe calico. Pretty awesome. It's the first one. As a matter of fact, I think it's the first one I've ever seen. I haven't really looked at them over on Morph Market, but it's pretty amazing what the calico does to the pinstripe. The pinstripe is a really bright gold gene. It has, you could definitely tell 
detail on this one. The top of the snake is almost like metallic gold. It's pretty awesome. And essentially what the calico is doing is it's bringing up kind of a lot of the, you can kind of see on this one it has kind of a pink side and you can definitely see kind of the difference in pattern right along the belly on the side of the snake that is different than a pinstripe. Kind of opens it up just a little bit. It's really hard to see in the pinstripe because the pinstripe is so visually dominant but you almost get these little almost like hieroglyphics right on the side of the snake and this girl she is crawling away i'm gonna have to put her back in her tub i got all these snakes i absolutely love the pinstripe and the pinstripe combos this is a really awesome combo with the pinstripe and the calico all right, so I am saving the best for last, and that is another bamboo calico combination. So take a look at this. These both are brand new. I just hatched them out. Haven't even shed yet. Pretty awesome. This is Bobby's grandchild right here. So this was from the, the this, as a matter of fact, this was actually from that bamboo calico, and this one didn't inherit the calico. And then take a look at this one. I actually bred, the, these were actually produced from that bamboo calico to a lemon blend. Last. And this one, I'm pretty sure got all four genes, the bamboo, the pastel, the pinstripe, and the calico. Look at how crazy that combination is. And you can compare it to just the straight bamboo. Makes for a really amazing combination with all those genes adding to the bamboo. That's kind of a crazy combination. <laughs> I've never, I, I have to say, I've never seen one like that. I don't even know if one is over on Morph Market like that. I haven't actually looked to see if there's one but it's kind of interesting though the pattern on the side it's almost like it has these little spots right along the side of the belly versus if you actually just look at the regular bamboo I guess you can see kind of the same similar spots on the bottom of the bamboo but it's just amazing how what a difference is when you work that calico into a lot of your combinations pretty awesome all right, so there you have it. Those are my amazing calico combinations here in my collection. I'm really warming up to the calico gene. It's pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have been asking me, hey, when are you going to post some of those hatchlings over on Morph Market? And <laughs> that is a good question. Probably what I'll do is I'll probably keep these hatchlings at least another month or two, grow them up a little bit, maybe have a little more exposure here on YouTube before I sell them. And I'm kind of thinking maybe holding back a lot more females this year and really boosting my collection for the following years. You know, it's always kind of a challenge trying to figure out what I want to sell and what I want to hold back. And it's always, you know, you have these kind of lower end females, but they're really productive. And it's hard to let go of them and replace them. A lot of times you just need to buy more racks and kind of expand your collection that way. As a matter of fact, take a look at Bobby. Take a look at this. He, from the beginning of the video to the end of the video, he completely shed out. Oh, completely shed. 100% no stuck shed at all. Pretty awesome just within a few minutes of filming this he completely said i actually just opened his tub and it was like an explosive shed all over the place pretty crazy so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video